Happy Victory Monday, everyone. Victory Monday is even better when it's against the Chicago Bears, and we sure have had a lot of those in the past what, six years? All of last night and this morning, I keep seeing videos and videos of fans at the stadium or fans, Bears fans, reacting uh, to that game and how confident they were that they were finally going to get a win over the Green Bay Packers, and then we all know what happened. It just brings joy to my heart to watch the utter disappointment of these Bears fans live right when that exact blocked field goal happened. But nonetheless, it's a Monday, so victory or loss, we go and take a look at the PFF grades brought to you by BetUS. More on that later. I'll also be on BetUS TV tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, to do a showdown with 49ers creator Grant Cohn. So make sure to come by 3 p.m. tomorrow on BetUS TV. That's on their YouTube channel. I'll link it down in the description. So this was obviously an ugly game, so I'm not expecting crazy grades for the Green Bay Packers on either offense or defense. There were some players that definitely showed out like Christian Watson, so I expect a good grade from him. But at the end of the day, yeah, it was an ugly game, but a win is a win, and now the Packers are 7-3. and three. So let's dive right into it, and we're going to start on the offense, and here are my predictions of the top three players. I think Josh Jacobs, Christian Watson. Those two, um, I think a lot of you would agree. I'm going to go out on a whim here and say Sean Ryan. I don't think PFF is going to agree. I thought Sean Ryan had one of his best games as a Green Bay Packer. And now that I'm saying that, watch, I'll be one of the lowest graded players on PFF. That's just how it works out. So let's go into the offense, bring up the screen, and let's see. Christian Watson, Zach Thompson. Christian Watson with a 93 point. Okay, Sean Ryan. He's at least top seven, pretty much top six. Uh, John Fitzpatrick only saw three snaps, so I'll take it. I'll take it. I expected maybe like a 71 or so for Sean Ryan, but I'll take an above average of 64.7 with wonderful pass blocking, 79.8, and slightly below average run blocking, which I thought he run he ran block really, really well in this game. But back to the top, Christian Watson, I mean, we could we could all expect this type of grade from that game. Was it four receptions, 150 yards, a career high? He's uh, one receiver on this team right now that has no drops. Like, Jaden Reed has drops, Dobbs has drops, he had one in this game, obviously, Dontavian Wicks has drops, Watson, man, keep getting them more involved, I thought they would do so out of the bye, and that's exactly what they did, and he's becoming a weapon for this offense, not that he wasn't a weapon, but it seems like the Packers just trying to utilize him um, a little bit more here, Zach Tom, the highest graded lineman, 73.8, Jordan Love, 73.7, he's kind of been around this mark a lot this season, that's even with the bad throws, the bad decisions, the interceptions. You see right around the 72, 73, 74 mark, a lot of games, or at least pretty much every game since week six for Jordan Love outside of Detroit. It's just slightly there below 70. So I, I thought, again, it was an overall good game by Jordan Love. The interception was one play, and it was a bad throw. But his mobility was great. It looks like he's finally healthy. The way he was climbing into the pocket or escaping the pocket, again, he looked fully healthy. It's great to see. Jaden Reed, 73.6. Of course, had that uh, free play touchdown to begin the game, then kind of went silent after that, but still a good game overall. Josh Jacobs, so I guess he would be near the top, and he is, 71.5. He also has a receiving grade of 86. 6.7. It says passing up here, but if it's a receiver, it's basically the receiving grade and good pass blocking grade. He's usually pretty low in regards to pass blocking, as you see here all throughout the year, except for week one. I mean, just abysmal pass blocking grade. So nice to see that um, here in yesterday's game. Fitzpatrick, we talked about only three snaps. Sean Ryan, uh, Chris Brooks, 10 snaps. So what did Emmanuel, Emmanuel Wilson had three snaps. So it's been going this way the past like two or three weeks, now three weeks. Um, Chris Brooks is simply out snapping Emmanuel Wilson. Um, I, I think he offers a little bit more and he's a better pass blocker. So that's probably why the Packers are, are putting him on the field over Emmanuel Wilson. But Wilson's still a very nice runner. We saw two carries, I think like 17 yards yesterday. So good runner still. Bo Melton saw five snaps. Malik Heath saw three snaps. Josh Myers in his return from injury, slightly below average. Nothing surprising here. Romeo Dobbs, a low grade. Uh, yeah, again, I think he had one catch. Uh, it was like 17 yards or something, but also had that really bad drop on that third down out route. Tucker Craft, a really low grade. I, I fully expected Craft to get like 60 yards in this game. The uh, Bears do not cover tight ends well. And for him to have a goose egg, I know the one target to him was Jordan Love overthrowing him, but still, even if he caught that one, it would have been like Tucker Craft, one catch, eight yards. So a little bit of a shock there that he wasn't more involved or more utilized in this offense for this game. Dontavian Wicks saw 16 snaps, a low grade. It's a low grade, but hey, he didn't drop the ball. 
Um, he was targeted once. It was just a good play by the defender, and it was tight tight coverage. Ben Sims saw 17 snaps, a low grade, and Elton Jenkins, the lowest grade on offense, 48.4. Still an above-average pass block grade. That tends to happen, but a very, very poor run block grade. And he's had a lot of very, very poor run block grades over this season, as you see. Week one and two, uh, really solid. Then it just really went downhill and been 40s, 50s the rest of the way. But his pass blocking has always been solid. I believe he's like the third highest – um, pass blocking guard in the NFL. And since we're on the topic, let's talk about blocking. Let's look at pressures allowed and sacks. So the Packers did allow one sack. It was when Jordan Love ran to the right side and went out of bounds like one yard behind the line of scrimmage. So it's still counted as a sack, but no one let up that sack. So not a single offensive lineman let up a sack against this Bears defense, and that is impressive. This offensive line has been pretty consistent in that all year in, in protecting Jordan Love. Elton Jenkins allowed two pressures. It had a penalty. Zach Tom allowed two pressures. Um, Rasheed Walker, Sean Ryan, Josh Myers all out of pressure each. So the Packers only allowed seven pressures against this Bears defense that you know had Montez Sweat, had some other great players on that defensive line. So very good game by the O-line. All right, so now let's take a look at the defensive grades. Before we do so, I want to give a big shout-out to BetUS for sponsoring this video. Use code YouTube150 to get a 150% deposit match on your first deposit. Using that code YouTube150 will also net you a 125% deposit match on your next two deposits. And when we bring up the screen, taking a look at BetUS's website, we do this every Monday, taking a look at the odds for the Green Bay Packers to make the playoffs. They are now at minus 500 to make the playoffs. So they have great odds to make the playoffs. And I think uh, the statistics are if you're a 7-3 and football team through through 11 weeks of the NFL season, you have about a 91-93% to chance to make the playoffs. It's not a given, obviously. A lot of things can change, similar to how the Eagles went last year. Um, really a downhill the second half of the season. Uh, but I, I think the Packers definitely will make the playoffs. It's just a matter of, you know, can they continue to fix the mistakes that are happening on this football team. So if you want to take a look at these odds or plenty of other odds they have on BetUS and the upcoming odds for the upcoming games, you can go do that. Just make sure to use code YouTube150 um, when signing up and always remember to gamble responsibly. All right, guys, now back to the video. Let's go over defense. My predictions for the top players on defense. I'm going to go with Brenton Cox Jr. Um, I don't know how many snaps he got, so I'm interested to see that. But when he was on the field, he made, I think, like two or three splash plays. So I, I feel he should be near the top. Rashawn Gary, um, I I feel like I saw him get a couple pressures, of course, get that sack really late that, you know, the Bears still converted after that third down. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a very important sack to get. It made the field longer for the Bears to make it then a longer field goal and the ability to get that thing blocked by Carl Brooks. And speaking of Brooks, I think he will also be on this list. Going into defense, we have Rashawn Gary at the top. Um, didn't expect him to be number one, but near the top makes sense. Eric Wilson, but only 13 snaps. Jair, but only 10 snaps. Eric Stokes, but only four snaps. Quay Walker, uh, so this is, again, it's only at 62.6, so barely above average. Um, that's actually quite of a shock. And there were some good plays by Quay. Um, a couple of times he did a good job, you know, run fitting against Swift. He had a good coverage against Keenan Allen on a, a deep out route, I believe it was. But there was a lot of bad, too, a lot of inconsistency. And I'm, I'm excited to look at the tape for tomorrow. I do that um, on my channel live streams. If you want to check that out, go click subscribe. Um, but I didn't expect him to be up this far. And Brenton Cox Jr. is at uh, 8. And he has 22 total snaps, two pressures and a sacks. Below average grade. A um, little confusing through those 22 snaps. If you have, I think, a tackle for a loss, a sack. Um, he had two stops, no missed tackles. I don't know. It's just confusing how that's below average. But other players, Isaiah McDuffie saw 21 snaps. So where's Edron Cooper? So he's down near the bottom here at 53.9. But more importantly, um, he saw 51 snaps. And that's a big difference from weeks prior. 51 to 21. Usually it's kind of equal or McDuffie has more. So the Packers clearly made the switch through this bye week that, hey, Edron Cooper deserves to be on the field. And I agree. And regardless of what this PFF grade says, um, Edron Cooper is definitely one of our, or it might be our best option at linebacker at this point. Corey Ballantyne saw a snap. Um, we already talked about Brenton Cox. TJ Slayton near the top. And I, again, it's below 60, but for this defense that didn't play good, um, it is near the top. And it was a good game for him. Two pressures, one sack. Usually he's graded very, very lowly, except for a couple games here. But uh, good game by Slayton, of course, to get that sack on that last drive as well, just like Rashawn Gary. Carl Brooks, um, no pressures, did have a tackle and a stop. But, of course, uh, the blocked field goal, but that would go towards his, his special teams grade, which um, we'll look at right after this. Valentine, 57. 7.9. I'm honestly shocked it's this high. He had six tackles, one miss. We'll go over receptions allowed, but man, I'm surprised it was this high. 
Xavier McKinney down below 60 isn't isn't good to see, obviously. I thought it was a pretty rough game for him, and uh, you know he had that missed tackle on DeAndre Swift. He had six tackles, two missed. He did have three stops, but Aaron Mosby saw 10 snaps. So the snap share was Cox got 22, um, Mosby got 10, Enigbari 41, Van Ness 25. So Van Ness, again, all the way down near the bottom. He is consistently like the lowest graded PFF defender. Again, I'm not saying he's great or doing wonderful, but I don't think he's that low in my opinion. Javon Bullard, I uh, expected him to be lower. He has good tackle grade, though. He made seven tackles and didn't miss a single one, so that's good to see. He did have some missed tackle issues um, through the first nine weeks, but he wasn't. He was pretty bad in coverage in this game. Um, Edron Cooper, good run defense, poor coverage. Again, we'll go over receptions allowed. Evan Williams and his return didn't have a great grade, 53.4. Run defense, very poor. Um, he did miss a tackle as well. Kenny Clark for the second week or third week in a row, zero pressures. I think second week in a row, he didn't record a single stat. And that's in 48 snaps, not a single stat. I mean, what is going on here? Honestly, what is going on here? Because Kenny Clark is pretty much invisible at this point. And we can talk about Quay as much as we do. We could talk about Javon Bullard, Rashawn Gary, right? At least some of these players, you see them and you're like, okay, they made it, just made a play. Hey, sure, they made some mistakes, but they just made a play. Kenny Clark has literally done nothing. Like, in the past three weeks, he's literally done nothing, and it's a detriment to this defensive line. It really is at this point. Devontae Wyatt, below Kenny Clark, also didn't record a stat other than a missed tackle. Oh, bad to see that. And Igbari, um getting heightened snaps due to the Preston Smith trade. Saw three pressures, but also missed a tackle. Keyshawn Nixon, we can all agree, not a good game by him. He did have three tackles, but also missed one. And Lucas Van Ness, we talked about him. He had a pressure. He had a hurry, um, but no tackles, so no other real stats other than that. And his run defense grade, very poor, 40.5. All right, so let's go over coverages and bring up the screen here. Um, Javon Bullard allowed six receptions on seven targets for 51 yards. Like I said, I, he was poor in coverage in this game. Nixon allowed three on six, so only a 50% rate there, but 39 yards. Valentine allowed three on four for 30 yards. Seemed like every time they needed a first down on third, they were going to throw a timing out route against Carrington Valentine, and it worked. It worked twice with DJ Moore. It worked once with Keenan Allen late in that game to get them in field goal range. Edron Cooper allowed three on four for 33. Um, Evan Williams allowed two on three for 13, so nice in coverage there, even though he only had a um, 64 coverage grade. Xavier McKinney allowed three for three for 32 yards. Again, slightly above average coverage grade. Quay Walker actually had a good coverage grade, did allow two catches for three targets, 27 yards. I will say he did look better in coverage in this game um, than he has in games past. I still think his tackling was very poor, and some of his run fits were, were poor as well, but he was a lot better in coverage um, in this game. Obviously, that one target to Keenan Allen, it was like way, way down the field. And I'm used to seeing Quay Walker not track a receiver that far, kind of just covering grass in the middle field. So nice to see him you know, track Keenan Allen and break that ball up. Isaiah McDuffie allowed one catch for six yards. Now to go over special teams grades, and as you see, Carl Brooks, a 93.5 as it should be. Basically won the game, right? Obviously every other play before that matters, but it came down to one play, and Carl Brooks made that play and won the game for the Green Bay Packers. And what was, you know, I wouldn't say a gimme field goal, but still a, a easy one for Cairo Sanchez has been a good kicker. So without the block, you know, it was going in. Um, 93.5 Hopper, another high-graded special teamer. In terms of tackles, Cooper had one, Ballantyne had one. Um, Cooper also had a missed tackle on special teams. And then the lowest grades, Matt Orzek, not shocked. There was a PAT after, I think, our first or second touchdown. It, like, skipped off the ground. And, you know, luckily, Daniel Whelan's very good at, you know, corralling bad snaps and getting them set for, for McManus. But, again, I, I still don't understand how Matt Orzek has a job, if I'm being honest. Ben Sims, Fitzpatrick, and, and Cooper also low grades near the bottom. So that does it for all the PFF grades. Week 11, Packers getting another victory, 11-0 for Matt LaFleur versus the Chicago Bears. And the last time the Bears beat the Packers was in 2018. That just feels absolutely crazy to say. Like, is it even a rivalry at this point? I don't know. You guys let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. It supports the channel a ton. Reminder to go check out BetUS. Use code YouTube150 at sign up to get a 150% deposit match on your first deposit. I appreciate you guys coming by. I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, go back, go.